100% of women interviewed said that they have had to change their behaviour at least once in order to feel safer. This should astound you, but shouldn't surprise you. Women are faced with extreme anxieties relating to their safety in public space, and it leads to avoidance or self-exclusion strategies. Women I interviewed are using strategies such as avoiding public transport at certain hours, carrying keys between their fingers, or sharing their location with close family and friends. The aim of this project is to ensure that women no longer live in fear. This project is titled Last Kilometre Home and focuses on using strategic design to create safer cities for equal use at night. When referring to the last kilometre home, it's defined as the time and movement between a public transport drop-off point and the person's final destination between the hours of 10pm and 5am. This is often done walking and our public transport system does not currently cater to or take responsibility over this time, despite 95% of women considering this part of their journey anxiety inducing. At the core of this project is the question, how might we help women feel safe in this moment with an emphasis on the words feel safe? The feeling of being unsafe versus reported attacks and assaults during this time is disproportionate, with fear being greater. And thus the focus of this project is on that feeling of being at risk. In order to produce the most meaningful outcome in a multifaceted and complex problem space, my focus has been on a strategy that includes education, responsibility, and a systemic approach through policy and government changes. This project has manifested as three main outcomes, which I will show in detail later in this presentation. As I mentioned before, this problem space is highly complex. In brief terms, there are multiple people involved in making decisions and having them all aligned in both funding and priority is extremely difficult. One major issue is the data gap, and this was my focus for a very large portion of the project. The gender data gap exists because the male experience is seen as the norm, and thus, when data is taken, it's not separated by gender despite knowing that women and men interact with space differently. When I interviewed a woman from the Department of Transport, she indicated to me that right now they are conducting research that is split by gender for the first time ever. This gap meant that I was faced with a lack of data around the experiences of women and rather had information on people. When survey participants were asked, have you ever considered your movement from public transport drop-off location to your home, an anxiety inducing part of your travel journey? Only 4.6% of women said no, whilst 53.3% of men said no. If we looked at this same information as a representation of people instead of separating by gender, it would show that 57.9% of people do not consider their movement from public transport to home an anxiety-inducing part of their journey. This entirely changes the information. Whilst over 95% of women sometimes or always find this anxiety-inducing, the combination of the statistics has shown that less than half of people do. In order to combat this, I spent a lot of time trying to understand the problem space from a data perspective. This included observation work, surveying, interviewing, and a cultural probe. I ran two surveys. One was on movement with 64 responses, and one was on behaviour with 102. These were pivotal in understanding how women travel and the comparison between that and the male experience. I discovered that 88% of women have avoided public transport due to safety fears, and that only 52% of women believe that there is a future where the anxieties that women feel are reduced and they have equal access and use of the city. I ran a cultural probe that asked women to map and document their last kilometre home, and it led to meaningful insights and a great pool of data to pull from, mainly regarding the features of their physical environment that make them feel unsafe. Finally, I interviewed 11 people from areas of government, law enforcement, urban planning and education. Their role was mainly to inform me of the process for making change. I wanted to create a functional approach to this issue for implementation in Melbourne, not hypothetical. These conversations grounded my work and allowed me to understand the intricate details of these industries. As mentioned earlier, there are three main outcomes from this project. This is a holistic approach to the issue of safety for women and includes a short and long-term component. The short term is focused on the changes that we make in under 10 years and can see effects as soon as they are implemented. They're more focused around the physical environment. The first aspect of this strategy is advocacy. This is through a social media campaign that's purpose is advocacy and education. Through these posts, the target audience of people aged between 16 and 30 will be educated on the issue of safety for women and the last kilometre home. 
This will begin to inform the audience of the systemic issue if they are not familiar, but also unite a group of like-minded people that are driven by their passion for equality. This includes the use of a hashtag, hashtag LKH, which is a call to action for people to share their stories or journeys home. Through this advocacy, change can be made. It starts from the Instagram page and leads to petitions or letters to local council and is therefore on the radar of those capable of making changes. This is then followed by written policy that would inform all future design decisions to Melbourne at a state government level to ensure that they're not causing women to be or feel more unsafe. The process for this will be conducting a septed assessment through a specific gendered lens by women with the assistance of OVGA to oversee and recommend adjustments based on the assessment. This would mean any changes to physical environment must be approved through this policy, in addition to any other regulations to urban planning. Women are avoiding public transport due to the last kilometre home. This means PTV is losing customers to rideshare simply because they don't cater towards this anxiety-inducing time. The night trip bus service is designed to transport people on their last kilometre home between 10pm and 5am. This means that it will transport people from their public transport drop-off location directly to their homes. The intention is to provide a service to women and people that will make them feel safer using public transport at night time and not have to seek expensive alternatives. This service would only be available from train stations and within a radius of 1.5 kilometres. I found that 11% of women are travelling over one kilometre to the closest or preferred train station. So the 1.5 kilometre radius would encompass majority, if not all, of these people. Train stations already have a really strong focus on safety with CCTV, PSOs and safety zones. So by having the service only available from trains, safety measures are already present. In addition, there would be higher activity on the trains, which I found through surveying makes women feel much safer. The long-term approach focuses on systemic changes that would be seen 10 years after implementation. Through education, we will see systemic change. This approach is an incursion run by a third party organisation that educates students in high school on topics such as consent, victim blaming, equality and safety for women. The incursion means that children are less likely to disengage like they might in a one hour session and the third party organisation delivering this information means well informed and educated instructors can teach the kids and remove any awkwardness of discussing these topics with teachers. It's designed to cover topics that the Victorian curriculum does not necessarily highlight in the health class curriculum and to engage parents in a parent session so that there is multi-generational learning. Through an educational approach, we will see systemic change in the way that women are treated in general and thus in public space. Safety for women should not be up for debate. This is 50% of our population that we're talking about, of which a large portion are changing their behaviour to feel safe, avoiding public transport and ultimately feeling unsafe in cities supposedly designed for their use. My strategic approach to this issue aims to ensure that this is no longer the case in the future. The short and long-term approach means that we would start to see the impact of these changes as soon as implementation and then long-term systemic effects. When working on social issues such as this, there is no easy or quick solution. I know that this doesn't solve the issue and it never aimed to. It fulfills my aim of a meaningful contribution to this space and allows action to be taken. 52% of women believe that there is a future in which they can feel safe and it's up to us to ensure that and show the other 48% that this is possible. This contribution provides people of the future working in this space the foundations to make a larger impact and educate people on how they can also be a part of the solution. Without a holistic and unified approach, we will not begin to see change. So it's time that action were taken. I'm hopeful for a future where women feel safe in their cities. And I truly believe that this is not a step, but a leap in the right direction.